also acknowledging existing statutory recourse to treat with domestic violence against women. Uh, Crystal Tomlinson, gender policy advocate, believes that more must be done to protect victims locally. And she's calling for lawmakers to reshape legislation to better protect women against domestic violence. And she's here with us this morning. Crystal, good morning. Good morning, Crystal. Hi, good morning, Neville. Good morning, Simone. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning to your viewers. Happy Monday. It's good to see you. Happy Monday to you, too. The stats tell us that one in four women here have been through, um, have undergone, have experienced domestic violence, which is really a frightening stat. I think we've been talking about this and how to eliminate and all the themes in the world that we've come up with. What are we doing wrong, Chris, to be able to address this? So we have a cultural problem, that's the first thing. And no matter how you change the laws, if you don't change the culture, it's going to be a very long walk to freedom. Um, we, we think domestic violence is still a man and woman issue. So if the man and the woman say, we're working on it, you know, pray for us, we, we're working on it. It communicates to the community, to the police, to the prosecutors, to the law, leave this alone then because they are working on it. Um, we don't take it upon ourselves to report it because it's man and woman things, we're gonna stay all tight because next thing you know, them wrap up again together and then back in at the house. And we don't recognize that what you're seeing is a cycle of abuse that if left unbroken too many times, that intimate partner violence leads to intimate partner homicide. And then when the woman, who in most cases is the victim, is murdered, and then in the, the rare instance, the man then goes and commit suicide, the entire community says, you know, it's been a while since they were having those issues. And, you know, every time she leaves, she comes back, which is also part of the statistics, because women have to leave the home about five or seven times before they leave permanently. So while we sit back on our verandas and say, look at her, she's gone back in there again, we have not yet recognized that there is a broad social issue with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. The children who are in the homes, who are seeing that violence every day, who sometimes, as they try to interrupt it, get beaten or hurt in the process, traumatized by it, go to school and play that violence out, learn that this is how man and woman must relate to each other, and then re replicate that cycle when they become adults. It is not a man and woman issue. It is a social problem for which we must now create laws that treat it like a social problem. In the same way we deal with um, Sissoka, and the need to protect our children. We don't see that as a man and woman issue or a mother-daughter issue when you hear a child is being abused. Whether the mother wants to do something or not, or the father wants to do something or not, the state says, this is a state problem. And we're taking the child and we're gonna work on this case and prosecute who needs to be prosecuted. We don't do that for domestic violence. Let, really. me, let, me, play a, let me play devil's advocate here because I understand exactly what you say. I agree with everything you said, but the laws are the laws. How can they be changed to do what you want to do? Because um, God forbid, if Simone and I are together and I hit her and she says, I'm not pressing charges and we are fine. What can the police do about that? If she says she's all right, leave me alone, my good. So, so currently in Jamaica, that's what happens because of the laws we have. The laws we have make it important to have the voice of the victim as part of the prosecution. And when the victim ceases to cooperate or the survivor ceases to cooperate or maybe comes to court and purges herself and says, I was lying at the beginning, nothing ever happened, I'm fine, I made it all up. It significantly weakens the prosecution's case. And no matter what other evidence they have, it is onerous now to prove that hypothetical Neville did something wrong. So the case in many instances falls through the system. In other jurisdictions though, they have what's called a no drop policy where evidence-based prosecution is the special prosecution for domestic violence. So whether or not the victim participates in the process, once the police become aware of an instance of domestic violence, the law allows them to use photographic evidence, video evidence, testimony from the medical doctor who saw her, testimony from the police officer who answered the call and visited the home or took the report, the, the audio from the 911 call, previous reports of violence in that household, eyewitness testimony from the neighbors, from the child in the house. So all of that becomes a mountain so that if the woman says, emotionally I can't deal with this, or I love him and I forgive him, the, the state has already determined that this is a crime. And even though you feel better, it doesn't change that a crime was committed and we are going to prosecute this crime. Yeah. So if you shifted the burden now onto the state to build a case, 
without the participation of the, the survivor, we stand a greater chance of successful prosecution, intervention, prevention, I, and rehabilitation where necessary. I find that to be a very interesting approach and almost like the ideal, eh? 360 degree approach, which is great um, because now we hear the police trying to sensitize their officers. They've set up different, I think different um, stations in different jurisdictions that deal particularly with um, intimate partner abuse. But oftentimes women don't report because of what they meet up when they go to report so they're not encouraged. And so this, this evidence-based system is something that would be really, really very important. How do we go about enacting that kind of approach within the system and the framework that we have now? And is it going to take time immemorial for that to happen? Well, we have seen in the last month how quickly Parliament can create new laws and amend existing legislation, especially when it's about to cost the state billions of dollars, with the Road Traffic Act being the example. Mm -hmm. We've seen it happen before with NIDS. We've seen it happen before with the um, extension of public states of emergency. So we know when there needs to be quick um, legislative action in Parliament, it can happen. Um, recently, MP Heroy Clark tabled a motion that in order to reduce domestic violence, one of the things he's proposing is mandatory paternity testing with the moving of a motion in Parliament that brings it up now for a debate, for a vote on it, and then for the necessary um, legislative steps to be taken after. Now, I would ask someone else in the House to think about the women who are abused, who did not give a man a jacket women who are abused, who don't even have children with their intimate partners. We need a law that protects them now. And I would, I would challenge a, a member of the House over the next 16 days of advocacy against gender-based violence to raise that motion and bring it to the floor for discussion. Um, the amendment would most appropriately um, be placed, in my opinion, not as an expert at, at this, as part of the existing Domestic Violence Act that we have. So thankfully, we do have an act that deals with domestic violence, but it does not handle this matter of prosecution, just the protection order for the woman to um, be safe and distant from her abuser, um, and the occupation order that allows the, the survivor to remain in the shared home, especially if, if, if they have children in the shared home with the child. So those are two important things that happen under the act but we can definitely strengthen that. And I, I want to make a quick point. I, I know the need to sensitize police is important because they too have become desensitized by the issue. Desensitized because as um, Novelet Grant, former acting commissioner of police shared, sometimes the police themselves are abusers in their homes. Sometimes they're coming out of homes where domestic violence was very prevalent, so it's normalized. And they also know that about 90% of the reports they take now by the time it gets to the first court date, the woman is no longer cooperating. Yeah. So for, for several reasons, they are desensitized and need to become hypersensitive to this. And a special prosecution arrangement would allow that. And right. some of them abuse themselves, yeah. are abused themselves. By the are way, abused themselves. Yes. By the way, how do, you feel about, how do you feel about what Mr. Clark said? Um, I think it is a, a dangerous correlation but again, I can't fight him for having his perspective and his exposure to the issue. I don't think he laid in bed. I just dreamed up that domestic violence could be related to um, an, an absence of paternity for children. But the data does not suggest that that is the prevalent reason. Because again, majority of women who are filing these cases, and the judges can tell you, the problem is not our own paternity. Sometimes the problem is the child is, the child is his and he's not taking care of the child and somehow says she has trust him out and I'm him for money and he just, you know, get vexed. Or he's unable to put food on the table, frustrated by that emotionally, takes that out. Something happened to him on the road, he can't fight, he won't fight on the road, come in and take it out. Drink and drug because I build stress, come in, mm -hmm. take it out on the road. Mm -hmm. So it's very rare. I've never heard an instance where that is the reason for domestic abuse. But I'm not going to um, disparage his perspective. I think it's an unhealthy correlation but we just need one member in the house to make a, a proposal for a bill that actually helps the majority of survivors of domestic violence. So for you, this is a matter of political will? It is. It is. We just have to want to do it the way we want it to change our road traffic act um, recently. Good to see you, my friend. Stay safe. God bless Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank and you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, All right, Chris. 16 days, um, as you heard. Let's see if of we could, activism. See if we could help mm -hmm. Crystal Tomlinson.
gender policy advocate. All right, coming up, uh, we talk. Grand